Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. The Samsung Gear VR looks a bit weird. There's no getting around that. You guys told us I looked weird when I was wearing it for our unboxing video and I wasn't in a position to argue. I did look weird, it looks weird, but it's worth looking weird for. That's my opinion anyway. Sure, you need a Samsung Galaxy Note 4 with it. Sure, every now and then it overheats and sure, it isn't perfect. There isn't a crazy amount of content for it, but the pros definitely outweigh the cons. This is our full review, so keep watching to find out exactly why. So this is the Samsung Gear VR. We're gonna kick off talking about what it is in terms of design, and you can see it's a glorified set of goggles. You've got this protective cover on the front, inside you've got two lenses. There are a few buttons, you've got a focus control up at the top, you've also got a back button and a touchpad as well as a volume control too. Very, very simple stuff. This is pretty much a dumb device. No brains inside here. For the brains, you will want to consider the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. If you don't have a Galaxy Note 4, then there really is no point even thinking of buying a Gear VR. But if you do, keep watching, because there is a lot about this that will make you want to do just that. If we take a look around you can see the straps allow you to change it by velcro means uh, to fit pretty much any face size. It's relatively comfortable for the recommended kind of half hour at a time uh, use that is uh, instructed with the VR introduction. Generally speaking it's a bit bulky, it's a bit big but once you get it on your head you can keep it on there for a fair while. It's a bit awkward though uh, getting headphones connected, that's one thing that we definitely will say. As far as the experience goes, as soon as you stick your Samsung Galaxy Note 4 into the Gear VR, you are transported to an Oculus user interface. And that Oculus user interface is fortunately reflected in a smartphone application as well, with much of the same functionality. The only difference is the Oculus application through your Gear VR is something that you control with your head. We can quickly take a look at the key experiences though, and these are mainly three categories. You've got games, you've got apps, and you've got experiences. Game Games either use the gamepad or they use the gyroscope or more to the point they probably use both depending on what you prefer. It's really nice to have a gamepad. The gamepad's definitely definitely a must buy if you have a Samsung Gear VR. The reason for that is obviously you can move forward back and everything without having to weirdly move your head but it gives the head movement an additional element to it like the head movement will allow you to look around levels uh, that you're controlling with the d-pad specifically games like uh, hero bound which was really fun um, was very very well you need the gamepad to actually even play it you play as this little gremlin and you can look around the entire level and discover kind of unlockables and stuff by looking around um, it's also really nice for games which give you the option of the uh, v VR as a controller or the gamepad, such as Temple Run VR. It's much, much more comfortable to tap on the gamepad than it is to keep your hand by the side of your head as if you are Cyclops from X-Men. Speaking of Cyclops from X-Men though, there's a game called Gunner. Gunner was really fun to play, um, even though it doesn't use the gamepad. The gamepad is not required. So there are some games that don't support the gamepad, but if you're getting this for gaming specifically, then the gamepad is a must buy. Applications, which uh, aren't obviously games, are more enjoyable media consumption um, apps such as the 360 video allowing you to access video that's been shot on 360 cameras and uploaded to um, the Oculus 360 servers. You can also access your own gallery and it makes your videos and pictures look amazing. Also Oculus Cinema, and you're transported slap bang into the middle of a cinema and it looks like you're in a cinema. There really is no other way of describing it. Um, you can also access um, trailers at the moment through Oculus Cinema, uh, but unfortunately there are no full movies just yet. You'll have to whack your own on here in order to play them back. Oculus 360 Photo is photos that are 360, and Matterport VR is a uh, simulation for shops and for uh, canyons and various other weird spaces that actually make static images um, and VR come together pretty beautifully. It's really the experiences which we found worked the best. The reason for that is they really do transport you to the heart of whatever they're trying to transport you to. Specifically the live experiences such as concerts. There's a Paul McCartney and Jaunt concert um, in which he sings Live and Let Die. That is amazing being so close to 
um, someone from the Beatles. It's just mind blowing. You've also got a Coldplay concert and even a concert in a room with just you and the person who's playing the piano and doing all the singing and whatnot. In addition to that, you've also got transportive kind of like experiences like Ocean Rift and the Blue VR, um, as well as Titans of Space. These take you to space and the sea and tell you a little bit about uh, the inhabitants of both, I guess. Um, really, really beautiful stuff. And Cirque du Soleil obviously just puts you in the front row at a Cirque du Soleil event really cannot stress enough how amazing it is for this and it's for this kind of content that you will really want to invest in the Gear VR. Unfortunately there isn't that much of it just yet. We really really wish Samsung had a little bit more. This stuff is amazing, don't get us wrong and it's probably worth it for hardcore geeks who have Samsung Galaxy Note 4s but um, definitely at all of our friends, all of the people at whatever age who stuck this thing on their head really did find the experiences were the things that made them really love it a bit. Games, yeah, for gamers, made a lot of people feel a bit queasy, so it's worth bearing that in mind, especially ones that simulate walking, like Dreadhalls, which is a horror. Um, it really did get our hearts racing a little bit. Um, but ultimately, the Gear VR app support isn't really where we want it to be when it comes to release, which is fortunate because it isn't at release yet. We cannot wait for the day when, for example, you get Netflix on the Gear VR. Why would we want Netflix? Because this thing makes you feel like you aren't in your room. If you have a pokey little room in the heart of a big city and you kind of just want some escapism, stick a movie on here and it would just be the best thing ever to kind of get out of your headspace for a bit. Um, the, when you're actually watching stuff on here, it's worth noting, even though this is a Quad HD display, you do still see pixels. So we can see exactly why Samsung didn't want this on any lower resolution devices. The reason for that is they are magnifying lenses and the Gear VR and Samsung Galaxy Note 4 work perfectly together. If you had a full HD screen, you would see many, many, many more pixels and it wouldn't be anywhere near as engaging. So the day when 4K screens come to smartphones, this will give them a perfect reason to. The Samsung Galaxy Note 4 obviously is a phenomenal smartphone. If you are getting it because you're an Uber geek, then the Gear VR is definitely, definitely one of the must have considerations for it. You don't necessarily need to buy it, but you need to try it because this really is the future. A few caveats, like we said, content isn't mind blowing for it just yet, just in terms of the amount of content. Once you run through everything that is on the Oculus store, unfortunately, there isn't a lot of replay value Value, aside from maybe the games. Having said that, if you do whack your own movies on here, it does make it a lot of fun. So if you have a collection of AVIs or MP4s or whatever it is, even home movies look great. It's also worth bearing in mind that this thing overheats every now and then when you're playing intensive 3D games. When you're making a game for a, 3, for a VR device, what you actually have to do is you have to create two games. You've got to render everything twice, one for the right eye, one for the left. That is why games have less impressive graphics than when you're playing it like a regular smartphone. And it's also exactly the reason why this can overheat every now and then, um, even though it's seemingly not that intensive a game. Still, even with those caveats, we were blown away by everything you could do with a Gear VR and the way it just transports you to whatever, wherever it's trying to take you to. Um, we definitely, definitely cannot wait for this concept to move on to the next level. And we applaud Samsung for getting it pretty much as near a consumer as possible right now and in a wire-free format. So that's the Samsung Gear VR. It isn't perfect, but it's the most perfect VR solution around today. Hopefully you've enjoyed our review. If you have, make sure you click that like button. And if you like BTECT in general, click subscribe. Thanks for watching.